the Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This Is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented transcribed as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. First, two brief questions for fathers and mothers. Do you believe that your boy or girl is the type who would benefit greatly by a college education? Are you determined to do everything in your power to see that he gets that education? If your answer is yes, then you'll want to know more about an equitable education fund. It's the painless way to pay for college expenses. The way to make sure your youngster gets his chance regardless of what happens to you. Interested? Then please listen carefully in about 13 minutes when I give full details on the Equitable Education Fund created for opportunity-minded parents by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Tonight, the subject of our FBI file, Armed Robbery. Its title, Ghost Town. The cold-blooded killer is a special variety of criminal. Naturally, no two of these men are ever exactly alike. But they do seem to have many mental traits and characteristics in common. In general, they are outlandishly conceited, emotionally childish, utterly selfish and ruthless, and completely lacking in a sense of values. They have been known to wax sentimental over a cat caught in a treetop and then go out and coolly murder a human being who stands in the way of their own selfish ends. As you will see in tonight's FBI file, rooting out these menaces to society is a job that requires determination, resourcefulness, and courage. Tonight's FBI file opens on a desert in one of our western states. A man and woman in a dark convertible wind along a lonely, dusty road. Oh, hot. Uh-huh. And dirty. Nice parlay. Mm. Let's stop for a drink. Okay, ad lib a saloon. Oh, there must be some place open. You said the ghost town was a tourist trap. It was, but the new highway bypassed this road, and even the ghosts took it on the lamb. Uh. Phew. That's it up ahead. Mm hmm. Ready? Uh huh. Oh, brother, this is really no place. How'd you know it was here? Sherman told me. Sherman? You know, he ain't satisfied just being the director on a picture. He's also got to be the makeup man, handle wardrobe, rewrite the script, and on the side, be a location scout. Oh, Sidney's not a bad guy. Not if you collect vultures. I'm supposed to find locations, not him. Well? Well, I wouldn't come this far just for a ghost town. Is there any closer to Hollywood? Have it been in Beverly Hills after 11 at night? <laughs> you uh, worked for Sherman before? No. Real comical character. He'd use the A-bomb for a hot foot. I don't mind practical jokers. Well, I don't either if they're human. You remember a picture last year called Alligator Man? Mm-hmm. Well, I went to Florida three weeks ahead of the company to find an alligator farm. Sherman called a friend of his down there and had my picture posted on every telegraph pole. Under the picture, it said, wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I got picked up four times than Gable's option. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah. When does Sherman start shooting here? As soon as he's through in Santa Fe. Mm. Well, you really came up with a ghost town. Oh. oh, you're not kidding. Wait a minute, I better take a shot of the street. 
What's that camera? Polaroid. The kind that develops the pictures right away? Yeah. Say, uh, get the post office in if you can. Got it. All right, let's look around. Get a shot of that Wells Fargo office and the hitching post in front. All right. Hold it, Tommy. What for? Did you hear anything? Sure. The boards in the sidewalk. They squeak like $3 shoes. No, it's something else. It sounded like maybe a voice. Oh, oh, Grace, nobody's been here since 1946. Come on. Come on, let's do our work and get back to some whiskey. Meanwhile, at the office of the county sheriff some miles away, FBI Special Agent Taylor has just entered and introduced himself to Sheriff Lou Burnett. Sheriff, the office caught me driving back from another case and said that there had been a bank robbery. Yeah, four men held up the bank at Powderville this morning. Powderville? It's a small town up the highway piece. Oh, I see. The cashier wounded one of the bandits, but not enough to stop him. Mm -hmm. The report said the wounded man and the driver of the getaway car took off west. Mm -hmm. Well, how about the other two? When the shooting started, they ran down the street and stole a car. Any descriptions on them? Not on the men, but we got descriptions on both cars. Uh -huh. I sent out alarms a while ago. One of my deputies is on his way to interview the people at the bank. Oh, well, maybe I'll run over there and give him a hand. You'll probably be able to use it. He's a new man. I'll get him on the radio and tell him you're coming. All right, fine. Oh, uh, what's his name, sir? Hartley. Frank Hartley. All right. And uh, can I have those license numbers? I might just run into them on the way over there. Yeah. Here. This first one's the original getaway car, and mm. that's the one stolen at Powderville. All right, fine. Have you checked the license on their car? Motor vehicle's working on it now. Mm. Oh, excuse me, Taylor. Sure. Sheriff Burnett. Hello, Sheriff. Uh, do you have a deputy named Hartley? Yes. Well, this is the county hospital. He's just been brought in here. What for? He was found unconscious on the highway. <laughs> I guess we're almost finished, huh? Let's, uh, let's cross over and get that blacksmith shop. Okay. Hey, look down there. Where? In that alley, there's a car. Look at the windshield. Those look like bullet holes. Yeah, I guess they are. Well, what do you suppose oh, happened? Oh, honey, who are you, Mrs. Cornball? <laughs> That's a prop. It wouldn't be a legit ghost town without a bullet-riddled car. Now, look, uh, as long as we're here, shoot another picture of the saloon from this angle. Mm. Can you, uh, can you get in that hotel fire escape? I'll try. All right. I'll take a look at the blacksmiths. Okay. Tommy. What? Tommy, I got a man in that picture. Huh? Well, he was on the fire escape. He... There he is, look. Hey. He's running towards our car. I left the keys in it. Come on. Hey! Tommy. Hey! We... Hey, you! Hey! Lay off! Hey! Hey! Oh. oh God. Why that... Why that dirty little... No, no good for... Not, not the guy in the car. But who do you think put him up to it? I don't know. Our practical joker, Mr. Sherman. But why would he Because do... it's very funny. We got no telephone, no water, no food, and it's 20 miles to the nearest town. Sheriff, did anything come in on those alarms? Yes, Taylor, we got one of the cars, but no man. Oh, how come? I saw Hartley in the hospital. He told me he stopped on the way to Powderville to help another deputy set up a roadblock. Yeah. Before they finished, a car shot past. It turned out it was the original getaway car. The one with the wounded man in it. That's right. Mm -hmm. A few seconds later, the stolen car with the other two bandits ran the block. Hardly fired after them, hit their gas tank, and the car ran into a ditch. Uh, two down, two to go. Yeah, not quite. What? Hartley arrested both men and started back here with them. After a couple of miles, they overpowered him, got the keys to the handcuffs, then they dumped him and stole his car. Uh, so we're still minus two cars and four bandits. 
Yeah, but at least you've got descriptions on two of them. And Hartley's getting out of the hospital in a little while. When he does, he'll come in and go over our file of pictures. Oh, that's good. Uh, just a minute. Sure. Sheriff Burnett. This is Parker in the wire room. Deputy Hartley's car has just been reported found. Where? The parking lot at the county rodeo grounds. Thanks, Parker. I'll get right out there. Tommy, got another cigarette? In the car. Oh, fine. Oh, that knucklehead Sherman. Those clouds are moving this way. Yeah. Rain's all we need now. How long do you think we'll be here? Till Sherman stops laughing. I don't think this joke's very funny. Come on, Grace. Where? Well, that storm will be here pretty quick. Let's find shelter. We haven't seen a roof yet without holes. The hotel's two stories. Maybe the lower one will be safe. Mm. That's where Sherman's stooge came from. I know. Tommy, Sherman can't just leave us here. You got a contract says he can't? Let's take a gander at this place. Go ahead. Thanks. Well, we can always sit on the cobwebs. Mm. Hey. What's the matter? Look there in the corner. There's a man on the floor. That... There's blood on his shirt. Looks like he's been shot. Wait, wait. Honey, I'll lay the price. It isn't blood, it's ketchup. Huh? Sherman's keeping the joke alive, and we're supposed to fall for it. You think so? Of course, of course. Sure, that's a central casting body. Come on, let's get out of here. About an hour to go, yeah. Well, how much of a crowd's in the stadium? 10,000. Yeah, I don't suppose there's any way of getting them out. No. Nope. Most of them would wait for the cab rope, even if the storm does hit. Looks like we're stymied. Didn't you find anything in Hartley's car? No, they abandoned it because that left front tire went flat. There's no telling what kind of a car they stole from here. Mm, we wait another hour, and they'll really have a start wait on Wait a minute. Have you got a man you can leave here? Those are my deputies handling traffic. Oh, fine. Let's have one of them stay here and get the details on the stolen car. Where are we going? West. That's the way they've been traveling since they left Potterville. They wouldn't come out this far and then double back, would they? Be no point in it. Well, then their rendezvous must be farther up the highway. Let's try cruising, Sheriff, and see if we spot anything. Tommy, I'm cold. Shake hands with a millionaire. Let's go inside. Oh, I'm here on the porch. Got to do something. You want to try walking back to the highway? 18 miles in this, we drown. Now, what else can we do? Sit here. Sherman's conscience has to bother him sometime. <laughs> He's got a cast iron heart. Tommy, it's a car. Huh? Well, that is a car, isn't it? Yeah. If it was on the main highway, we couldn't see it, could we? No. No, it's headed for here, all right. Hey, that's not my car. Honey, let's not be particular. They're heading right for us. That's all we have to care about. Well, well, you finally felt sorry for us, huh? <laughs> Great joke, boys. Ha, ha, ha. Great joke. Who are they, Tommy? I don't know. Sherman Stooges, I guess. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. Who are they, bud? I don't know. Okay, fellas, okay. Come on, let's get out of here. Hold it, mister. Let go of me. Oh, look, boys. Joke over. Let's go, huh? You ain't going any place. Oh, yes, we are. Come on, Tommy. Stay put. Oh! Now, oh. turn around and get back in there. <laughs> We will 
return in just a moment to tonight's exciting case from the official files of your FBI. Now let's pay a quick visit to the living room of Andrew McDonald. Fred Barton, Equitable Society representative, has dropped in to discuss life insurance problems. Fred, what's this Equitable Society college education insurance I've heard about? I'd sure like my kid to go to a good college. Well, you must mean the Equitable Education Fund, Mr. McDonald. It's very simple. You take out an endowment life insurance policy that will be all paid up about the time your boy's ready to enter college, say, in the class of 1970. The money's all there, ready and waiting for him. It's the painless way to pay for a college education. Well, just what do you mean, painless? Well, it's pretty much the same principle as buying an automobile or TV set on an easy payment plan. You spread the cost of your boy's college education over 15, 16, or 17 years, instead of taking a beating during the four years he's actually in college. I get it. It's buying a college education in 15 installments. That's it. And if you should die before the plan's completed, it immediately becomes paid up in full. The Equitable Society holds the money, pays interest on the full amount, and turns it over to your son when he's ready for college. Regardless of what happens to you, he's sure to get the education you want him to have. Oh, well, that sounds right up my alley. Tell me, is it too early to start when your kid's two years old? No. The earlier you start, the lower your yearly cost will be. In any case, the amount you decide to pay is strictly up to you. Maybe you'll decide to start an equitable education fund for about half what you expect to pay for your son's college expenses. For instance, suppose you decide on $2,500. At your age, that would cost you... If you have children of your own, why not get the cost of an equitable education fund from your equitable representative? These equitable men don't go in for high-pressure methods. They give you the information you need and let you make up your own mind. Get in touch with your equitable representative soon. Or write care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, Ghost Town. Detective story fans who are good citizens and criminals often have one interest in common, the perfect crime. But whereas the good citizen likes to mull over its fictional possibility, the criminal is always confident that he is about to commit it. But as the detective story reader proves, and as the criminal always learns, there is no such thing as the perfect crime. Our jails and penitentiaries are filled with men and women who have refused to recognize the truth of this statement. Tonight's case is an example. It is one more proof that the perfect crime is a mirage that lures men to disaster. It is proof once again that crime does not pay and never will. Tonight's FBI file continues a few minutes later as Sheriff Burnett and Special Agent Taylor ride along the highway. Looks like we're out of the storm. Yep. Sheriff, is there anything down this way that's not on the map here? No. Well, then the nearest town's about 50 miles, huh? Uh-huh, and they've been alerted. Parker calling Sheriff Burnett. Come in, Parker. Just got word from the rodeo grounds. The stolen car is a black Ford sedan. License number 77346. It had been parked next to Hartley's. Get out and alarm. All right. Anything in on that first car? Not yet. Sheriff, how about those pictures? Parker, you heard from Hartley? He's in the fire room now. Good. If he gets anything, call us immediately. Mister? Yeah? Is there any food in your car? No. Grace, don't knock yourself out. He wouldn't help us if he could. Uh, there's the other one. Bud, did you find the money? No. And Chuck just died. Oh, too bad. He told me a couple of things before he went. Pete's got the loot. Loot? You tell your wife Pete run They're stick-up yeah. men. Tommy, what'll we do? Uh -huh. Sit and wait? Be in jail. 
Wait for what? I don't know. Maybe the Marines. I know where he'll be. The old Adobe up back of the mine. Oh, let's go visit him. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Now, what's bothering you? Well, you just can't leave us here. We'll never get out alive. At least take us back to the highway. We've got things to do. We ain't running no taxi. Bud, where you going? The lady's giving me a notion. Get up. Who, me? Both of you. Tommy, he's got a gun. There ain't no one looking for you two. You drive our car. Where? Any place we got a mind to go. Come on. Parker, Corey here, Burnett. Come in, Parker. Harvey just identified those two men he saw. Who are they? The Fulton brothers, Bud and Lloyd. They got any record? Yeah. They were arrested first in 1945 at the ghost town. They had jobs there as guides. Sheriff, where is that ghost town? Down that cutoff we passed a while back. I thought it'd be a perfect hideout. We can turn around and head back. I think we ought to. Parker, we're going to ghost town. All right, Sheriff. While you're there, you can check something else that just came in. What's that? A movie company over in Santa Fe reported two of his people missing, and that's where they were headed. All right, we'll call in as soon as we get there. Slow up. When you get by the shack, drive around to the side and stop. Okay. This is it. Lloyd, you go in the front way, I'll go to the back. All right. Turn off that motor. Okay. Give me the keys. Here. You two wait here. We'll be back. Tommy, this is our chance. For what? To get away. To where? I've got no idea where we are. What do we do? I don't know. How about a fire? Huh? We can set fire to the brush. That'll bring help. Not quick enough. Tommy. Maybe our two friends got it. Let's hope so. Someone's coming. Oh, it's them. Come on, you two. Get out. Hey, Taylor, I found a body over in that hotel building. One of the Fulton brothers? No, his name was Chuck Gates. I called in, and Parker says he was arrested twice with the Fultons. Well, that identifies three out of four of the bats. You come across anything? Yeah, the original getaway car's down there in the alley. There's nothing in it, though. What are those papers you've got? Oh, these are Polaroid negatives. I found them scattered all around. What are they for? Oh, they're from a camera that develops your picture a minute after you take it, Sheriff. Those movie folks must have had it, huh? Yeah. Sheriff, let's add up what we've got so far, huh? Now, we know the original getaway car got here with Chuck Yates and bandit number four. Yeah. Yates must have been the one that was wounded coming out of the bank. That's right. All right, the movie people were here, and their car's gone. Right. Now, nobody's looking for that car, so if the Fulton brothers got here while bandit number four was around, they'd have all left in it with a movie couple driving. Yeah, but then the car stolen from the rodeo grounds would be here. Well, that's just my point. Both cars are gone, so bandit number four must have taken the movie couple's car. What do you think happened to the couple? Well, they either went off with number four or with the Fultons and... Hey, wait a minute. Sheriff, swing your flashlight over here again, will you? Yeah, that way? Yeah, right there. Hey, what is that? It's a Polaroid camera. That movie couple must have left in a real hurry to forget their camera. Mm hmm and The last picture's still in here. It's the salon. I see. All right, look, there's a man on the hotel fire escape. Hey, Taylor. Let me get a closer look at that. Oh, yeah. I know that man. Why 
find anything, Lloyd? Not yet. But I'll just keep digging. Oh, I wish I had a cigarette. I'll take one more look. What are you doing? Looking for a cigarette. You just sit still. But I want to... Tell me to as he says. You know something, Grace? What? I wish these two bums knew something about the picture business. Why? I'd like to sell them a new writer. <laughs> well, if you do, pick one who'll write me out of this script. Hey, Pod, look here. Here's a bag. Open it. Well, it looks like they found the loot. Does that mean they'll leave us? I hope so. Yeah, it looks like it's all here, too. Good. What do we do now? Get moving. Yeah, but what about them? I got that old figure. Come on, you two. Get up. Where to now? You're back in the car. You're letting them go? Just as far as the cliff. Oh, now, look. The car off the cliff. That's one too many. Shut up. Lloyd, get Pete's body. Throw it in with them. Now, that's real hokey. Tommy, they're not kidding. You're so right, lady. Now, get going. Don't move! Hey. What? Get him! Get off that gun, Fulton! Drive it! You there! Up with your hand! Okay. Don't shoot. They were going to kill us. Yes, ma'am, I know. We heard them. All right, Sheriff, let's take them in. Lloyd and Bud Fulton were turned over to local authorities and prosecuted on a charge of murder. Each received a sentence of life imprisonment. After Sheriff Burnett's recognition of the man in the picture as Pete Lake, the fourth bandit, he and Special Agent Taylor sped to the adobe hut where Lake had been arrested during the previous year. And so your FBI, in cooperation with a local law enforcement agency, was able to close this file and to apprehend two vicious killers. Even more important, of course, it also saved the lives of two innocent people. No one has ever fully explained why certain men become criminals of the type in tonight's case. But they have always been an ugly part of the American scene. And so long as they remain, your FBI will continue to hunt them and to make them stand trial for their acts. a quick review of the advantages of an equitable education fund. First, it's the painless way to pay for a college education. You spread the cost over many years instead of taking a beating in four. Second, it's sure. From the moment you start, you're certain your children will get the kind of education you want them to have, regardless of what happens to you. So why delay? Ask your equitable representative for full information on an equitable education fund. All right, care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Its subject, armed robbery. Its title, The Curious Fisherman. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of places or persons, living or dead, is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry D. Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacy Harris. Others in the cast were Newton Arnold, Parley Bear, B. Benaderet, Edmund MacDonald, Wally Mayer, and John Sheehan. This Is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling transcribed story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Fisherman on This Is Your FBI. Stay tuned for A Life in Your Hands starring Lee Bowman, which follows immediately. This program came to you from Hollywood.